This is the Site C Dam, a massive hydroelectric project in Canada. It's huge. Yeah, these are 10 meters in diameter, yeah. these. Known for being the most expensive in the country's history. This is a generational type project. Uh, it's a very, very large one. With a $16 billion price tag, it's being built on the Peace River in British Columbia, making it the third dam on this river. Some see it as a key to Canada's clean energy future. Once all the generating units are online at Site C, we'll be able to power almost half a million homes in British Columbia. While others criticize it for its environmental and social impacts, Protesters gathered outside BC Hydro headquarters to voice their ongoing concerns about the Site C dam project in northern BC. In today's video, we'll dive into why this dam is so controversial and what's driving the developers to finish it. So, let's see. The Site C dam is being built on the Peace River, just 14 kilometers southwest of Fort St. John in northeastern British Columbia, Canada. It sits around 80 kilometers downstream from the WAC Bennett Dam. This dam is a big part of the region's future, and when it's finished this year, it will produce about 5,100 gigawatt hours, GWH, of electricity every year. In other words, it will supply enough power to light up approximately 450,000 homes each year across British Columbia. This dam is crucial to meet the growing energy needs in the region. Site C is a hydroelectric power station, and you can think of it like a giant battery. The water stored behind the dam holds potential energy, waiting to be released. When the water flows out, that potential energy turns into kinetic energy. The water rushes through turbines, making them spin, and from there, generators turn that motion into electricity. Seems simple, right? But of course, it's not that easy. In Canada, hydroelectric power is a big deal. It provides 60% of the country's electricity, making Canada the third largest producer of hydropower in the world. Site C is just one of 475 hydroelectric stations across the country. Why so many? Well, Canada has plenty of water, and hydropower is reliable, efficient, and produces clean, renewable energy that's relatively affordable. This is why Site C, while impressive, isn't all that unusual in terms of infrastructure. When finished, the Site C dam will be an impressive site. It will stretch 1,000 meters across, be 500 meters wide, and rise 60 meters tall. It will contain 16 million cubic meters of earth fill material. Most of the material was dug up on site, but some was brought in and moved using a five kilometer long conveyor belt system. It might seem like a lot of work, even for a dam, but it's being built to handle a rare earthquake, one that's expected once every 10,000 years. Many experts say British Columbia is overdue for one. Once the remaining infrastructure is finished, the reservoir behind the dam will be filled over the course of four months. During this time, 83 kilometers of the Peace River will be flooded, creating a reservoir that's more than half the size of Washington, D.C. After it's up and running, the Site C dam will produce 5,100 gigawatt hours of electricity each year, boosting the entire supply of BC by about 8%. Not only that, but this power will be renewable, available when needed, and relatively affordable, according to the builders. But with all these benefits, you might wonder, what's the catch? If Site C can provide so much renewable energy, why has it faced criticism? To understand the concerns, we need to look at the bigger picture. Let's turn the clock back to 1872, before anyone thought about using the Peace River for hydropower. And now, let's look at what the Peace River looks like today. You see, Site C isn't the only dam on the Peace River. In fact, there are three dams along the river, and they're all part of one large hydropower project that was first suggested back in the 1950s. The first dam, the WAC Bennett, was built in 1967 and created the Williston Reservoir. At that time, it was the largest earth-filled structure ever built. And even today, Williston remains the seventh largest reservoir by volume in the world. Years later, in 1980, a second dam was constructed further downstream at Peace Canyon. This created the Dinosaur Reservoir, which is smaller than the Williston Reservoir. 
But that's one of the great advantages of this project. By building multiple dams on the same river, the water can be reused to generate electricity as it flows downstream. And now, this brings us to Site C. For years, BC Hydro, the publicly owned company behind all three dams, pushed hard for Site C. But the provincial government kept rejecting the project. BC Hydro was predicting a 2% rise in electricity demand every year, but the government didn't see it that way. However, things changed in 2014 when the project was finally approved. So what made the difference? It was the people. British Columbia's population had tripled since Site C was first proposed, and the economy had soared. On top of that, Canada had started moving toward a net-zero future. With all of these changes, the provincial government eventually agreed that there was a real need for more electricity. And in July 2015, with a budget of about $6.4 billion, construction of the dam began. But as usual, not everyone agreed with the decision. In May 2016, over 200 Canadian scholars came together to raise serious concerns about how the Site C dam was approved. The Royal Society of Canada even took the unusual step of sending a separate letter in support of these concerns, addressed to Prime Minister Justin Trudeau. The scholar's letter summed up their worries. Our assessment is that this process did not align with the commitments of both the provincial and federal governments to reconciliation with and legal obligations to First Nations, the protection of the environment, and decision-making based on scientific integrity. These scientists argued that the environmental impact of the dam and the lack of consent from First Nations made Site C a key test of the Trudeau government's promise to develop resources in a more responsible, science-based and sustainable way. Despite these concerns, the federal government rejected the scholars' request to stop construction. Catherine McKenna's office, the Environment and Climate Change Minister, stated that the government had no plans to revisit the Site C environmental assessment. He wasn't the only one with concerns. John Horgan, the opposition leader, was openly against the dam as well. He promised a full review of the project if he were elected in 2017. And Horgan won the election. By then, construction had been going on for two years, and the project was already behind schedule and over budget. But true to his word, Horgan ordered the review. The findings were clear. If Site C went any further over budget, it would no longer make sense to continue. It would end up costing more to finish than to cancel it altogether. In the official report, the reviewers stayed neutral, pointing out that the decision was based on future energy needs that couldn't be predicted with certainty. So given this situation and remembering Horgan's earlier opinion about the dam, the newly elected Horgan made the tough decision to move forward with construction. He said it wasn't the project he would have favored, but that it must be completed. Canceling a mega project like this while it's already under construction is a hard call. However, the challenges didn't stop there. In a 2020 progress report, BC Hydro assessed the overall health of the project as red, meaning there were serious problems. They raised serious concerns about the schedule, scope, and budget, and pointed out structural issues with some of the foundations. Speaking of foundations, this project has a history even before construction began. Site C doesn't sit on solid bedrock, but on shale, a type of soft rock that can shift under pressure. While this isn't a deal breaker, since 16 other dams around the world have been built on similar ground, it is still critical to ensure a stable foundation, especially in a place where landslides are not unusual. To address this issue, BC Hydro came up with a unique solution. Instead of building a dam straight across the river, they designed it in an L shape, as you can see here. On top of that, they added a concrete buttress below the dam to boost stability and protect against seismic activity. They used roller compacted concrete on the shorter leg of the L and built key components like the spillway and generating station on top. This approach provided a stronger base than the unstable shale on the south bank of the river, improving the overall stability of the dam. 
As of today, construction is almost finished. After speaking directly with BC Hydro, they confirmed that they plan to start filling the Site C reservoir in August of this year. The latest estimates show the true cost is around $16 billion, making it the most expensive dam Canada has ever built. Part of the cost increase came from geotechnical delays and construction slowdowns caused by COVID. However, the real cost isn't just about dollars and cents. The controversy surrounding the dam goes beyond money or even safety. The Peace River Valley is part of Treaty 8, an agreement made in 1899, which ensures that First Nations have the right to hunt, trap, and fish in the region. Indigenous activist Helen Knott points out, if the valley is flooded, then the promise of that treaty will be violated. This treaty is crucial to the communities that depend on the land, that depend on the treaty. Eight First Nations strongly oppose the proposed Site C project. Their concerns include the $8 billion cost to ratepayers, the environmental damage, and the destruction of sacred sites like burial grounds and other historical landmarks. They've already experienced the negative effects of two large dams, the Wack Bennett and Peace Canyon dams, which have changed the landscape and caused environmental harm that has never been properly addressed. The Peace River Valley holds deep significance and cannot be replaced. The impacts of Site C are far-reaching and cannot be undone. Therefore, Treaty 8's stance is clear. This project is unacceptable, and the government should explore alternative solutions for meeting the province's energy needs in a meaningful way. And that's why, in 2019, the UN called for construction to be paused until an agreement was reached with the affected First Nations. While construction didn't stop, an agreement was eventually made. But of course, a mega project like this affects more than just people. The Peace River Valley is also home to a wide variety of wildlife that will be displaced or killed by the creation of the reservoir. One report states that at least 63 species are at risk due to the construction. In fact, the WWF openly condemned Site C, warning it would cause irreparable harm to local wildlife. Beavers, birds, bears, and elk will all lose access to their natural habitats and migratory routes, while BC Hydro plans to replace the wetlands that will be destroyed. Rebuilding ecosystems takes time, and critics argue that the damage will already be done. Looking at everything, it's clear that Site C, like many megaprojects, faces a lot of challenges, economically, environmentally, and socially. So you might wonder why BC Hydro and the government are so determined to push forward with it. Well, there are three reasons. The first is the most obvious electricity. Site C will generate clean, renewable electricity for over 100 years, and a lot of it. Once it's fully operational, it will produce enough power to run 1.7 million electric vehicles every year. Hydroelectric power is actually one of the cleanest forms of electricity available. BC Hydro claims that Site C will produce fewer greenhouse gases per gigawatt hour than most other sources, including wind and solar. However, it's not just the amount of electricity that matters. It's also about how available it is. Inside the dam, there's something called a headgate. This controls how much water flows through the dam, opening and closing to adjust the flow. By using the headgate, the dam can produce more electricity when demand is high and reduce production when it's low. This ability to control the flow of water makes hydropower different from other renewables like wind and solar. We can't control how much wind or sun there is, but we can control how much water flows through a dam. This makes hydroelectric projects like Site C especially efficient. And since Site C is the third dam in a series on the same river, its efficiency is even greater. In fact, by reusing water from upstream, Site C will produce 35% of the electricity generated at the larger Wack Bennett Dam, but with only 5% of the reservoir area. Because of this, Site C can provide a lot of clean electricity while using a relatively small amount of land. Yes, thousands of hectares will be flooded, but it's still much less land than if the dam were built on a river without the existing infrastructure. At the end of the day, the electricity has to come from somewhere, right? 
The second reason to push ahead with the project is economics. Despite the high costs, Site C offers a wide range of economic benefits to the region and to British Columbia as a whole. According to BC Hydro, the construction of Site C will add $130 million to the regional GDP and $3.2 billion to the GDP of BC as a whole. In other words, Site C will create a lot of work. This includes both direct jobs from construction and indirect jobs from purchasing goods and services. In February of last year, over 2,700 people were working on site. If we add up all the work hours put into construction, it equals 10,000 employment years. And when we include the work done by manufacturers and service providers from outside the region, that number grows to 33,000 years of work. All this work and activity helps grow the economy and benefits development across the province. Additionally, BC Hydro has invested in projects to repair some of the damage done to communities and wildlife because of Site C. For example, they've set up a $13 million Indigenous Traditional Use Fund to preserve land and resources for traditional use, and they've hired a full-time conservation officer to protect local wildlife. On top of all that, the government has already spent billions of dollars on the project. If the government gave in to pressure and stopped construction, most of that money would be wasted. That certainly doesn't look good on the budget sheet. Now let's move to the third reason. This one is a bit more speculative and definitely up for debate. But essentially, Site C isn't the only major project BC has been working on. Take the Coastal Gas Link Pipeline, for example. This 670 kilometers pipeline will carry natural gas from northeast BC to the west coast. And where does the pipeline start? Right here in Dawson Creek, just 63 kilometers away from Site C. Why is that important? Well, the gas extracted from the earth has to be processed in Dawson Creek before it can flow through the pipeline. At the other end, in Kitimat, it's cooled to a liquid form, known as liquid natural gas, or LNG. These processes need a huge amount of electricity, and the LNG produced at the end is sold abroad for huge profits. Some believe that Site C is being built mainly to produce the electricity needed for preparing LNG for export. The BC government is set to make $23 billion in revenue from this export project alone, along with another $24 billion in private sector investment. With huge gas reserves across Canada, the potential profits could be massive. The market is also there, as Asian countries are eager to buy Canadian gas, which the government still claims is environmentally friendly because it helps transition Asia away from coal. BC Hydro has addressed this controversy by saying that Site C would be necessary with or without an LNG sector. They explain that BC's electric grid is integrated, meaning all electricity is pooled together regardless of where it's coming from or going. However, critics argue that using hydropower to process natural gas is just a way to greenwash a climate-unfriendly industry, prioritizing profit over the public good. So what do you think? Is it still better to provide energy for LNG production through hydropower, or do you agree with the greenwashing argument? In any case, Site C is expected to start producing electricity sometime next year, and since they plan to begin filling the reservoir by the end of August, this deadline seems very realistic. If everything goes according to plan, we'll soon see what the Peace River Valley will look like. In the years to come, we'll be able to revisit the question of whether Site C was truly worth it. Perhaps the increase in clean electricity will balance out the project's high costs. Or maybe the environmental damage, the LNG industry, and the issues surrounding indigenous land rights will overshadow the dam's legacy. One thing is certain though, people will keep talking about it. What do you think about the Site C Dam project? Do you believe it's worth the cost? Or do you agree with the critics who say it harms the environment and indigenous rights? Share your thoughts in the comments below. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to subscribe to our channel so you can see more videos like this. See you in our next video. Until then, take care and thanks for watching.